Hi, Steam Lizzie here, aka Elizabeth Amber Bazakuzino. I have another art demonstration for you. If you haven't got a chance to visit the Fantasy Fairy Garden or the Fantasy Forest, um, please do so. These four pots that you see here will be outside once again, but I'm going to show you how to make these. These are fairy flower pot condos. So they're lots of fun to make. Um, if you don't mind breaking things up a little bit. If you happen to have old flower pots that are already kind of broken into pieces or have a part missing, then it's a great way to recycle them and use them. Um, often you can find these um, in, in people's recycling or people put them out and you can make some beautiful ornaments for your garden. If you don't happen to have some broken pots already and you need to break your own, um, then that's kind of a fun part too. So you can do that in a few ways. You can take the pot and you can actually go on the side of the stone or a curb and kind of tap it and, until you get a crack in it. Or you can take a hammer and what I like to do actually is put the pot between my feet. So I'm holding it steady and I lean over a chair, have it between my feet. But if you do it on a table or on the ground or something, take this part of the hammer and tap as hard as you need to till you get a crack here. If you just take this part, you may end up smashing too much out, but you can try the method that works with best for you as well. It's hard to control the cracks sometimes and it's hard to control how they break. So, you know, it's, it's always, um, there's always an element of surprise in how it comes out. This one, for example, started to break here, but it doesn't matter if it has other cracks in it because you can fill that in with glue or paint or what I've done in some cases where there were cracks, I just turn this around, I've actually sort of painted vines to it or I have things coming out through the natural cracks that are there. So you use what you got. It's art and you have fun with it. So I've gone ahead and broken this one. And of course, it's very good to have different sizes. Um, for my demonstration, I only have one other size here, and this one I'm not actually going to break. Um, but as you can see with some of the ones on the table, there's a lot of choices of different sizes. So this one has four different sizes. Um, this one has about five different sizes. Um, this one just has two, and you can use pieces as well. So always save the pieces, particularly the ones with the rims. The ones that um, don't have the rims are not as useful, but you want this part to be part of your condo so that when you layer it, you can put in other pieces. So even if it's the same size, you can do that sort of thing and layer it. Um, and what I do with the smaller pieces, I still save those. Um, I don't have any here, but you can put a piece in the bottom. And let's pretend that this is a little higher up. And then you can sit a pot on top of it. So you're going to stack the pots in different ways. And I've got the bottom one um, being the very bottom, but you can um, also have some that sink lower and then more than raise. So you can decide exactly how you want to do that, how you want to stack it as creatively as possible. So you can add other ones, pieces to stack them, strategically place broken pieces in here, glue them in as you go. And then once you get to that point um, and you've got it glued in, then you start to decide what you want in here. So you can use natural things. So um, I've used a lot of moss, different kinds of moss here. The, the white kind and some green kind. You can buy this in different places, um, even in some dollar stores. So it doesn't have to be terribly expensive. Um, and you don't really want to pull it out of nature. You don't want to take something that's already growing. Um, the craft stuff, it's actually grown for that purpose. It's not sort of robbed from nature. So, um, But, you know, sometimes you just find moss that's detached, that's just sitting there in a lump that's no longer growing, and feel free to take that. So you can place moss in here. You can take anything that looks like grass and place it in. You can buy sort of, you know, little pieces of 
these come in squares, AstroTurf, you can put it in. I've lined some of the bottoms here with AstroTurf, so you can decide the different ways that you want to do that. So sometimes it's good to do the painting as you go. So with something like this one, I have painted the edges as I build up because as you can see, some of these rims um, are very tricky. And you can do different things with it, have vines coming down, going down. You can paint little doors and windows and other sides. Here, in this one, you can see where there was a natural crack where it didn't break very nicely. And I've actually painted some foliage or some vines coming down from that. So there's a lot of things you can do with the paint as well. Or you can take some that you previously painted just for decoration, such as this one. So this was actually the original bottom for this pot, but I found it kind of small, so I used a bigger one, so I had more room in the bottom. And then when I used this pot, I kind of matched the design up here so that I made it kind of work. So once you get all your pieces in, and you can glue them in with hot glue, um, with different kinds of glue, like, um, like auto glue or E6000, or anything that's very strong can be outdoors and is permanent. And once you get them together and you've painted it and you've put in your moss, what I do is um, I use a kind of varnish over it. So you can use varathane or any kind of varnish that's good for outdoors. So even the moss here, it's a little bit hard because the thing is you don't want a lot of water to run through and get trapped inside and work away at your bonds because if this is out in your garden you want it to stay outside and you want it to be weatherproof. So I even do varnish what's in here, natural or not. Um, one other type of thing you can use besides moss, um, something that you can see probably in this one, uh, which again is something flat that you put inside to line uh, a flower pot. So use your imagination, find anything you want to put in it and create the condo any way you want to go. What you put at the top of the condo could be um, a bunch of sticks you glue together to make a little hide. It could be kind of like a birdhouse that you um, use instead as a little fairy house. I got creative with sticks and stones. So for example, this top right here is a, a broken stone that I found and the same with this one. I made them into mushroom tops, painted them, glued them on a piece of stick, painted a little door on, so I made a little fairy hut. Now when you get to the fairies, you can decide if it's something you want to make from scratch or if you want to use found little fairies somewhere. If, you, if you're just crafty and you don't feel comfortable enough making your own fairies, then you can find anything you want to put in it. And keep in mind too, that in fairy lore, a lot of fairies look like insects. So if you find um, a little dragonfly somewhere, you can paint a little body on it to make it look like a dragonfly fairy, or different insects can be used that way, um, bees as well. So you can take it in any direction that you want. So I've matched up some of the coloration with my fairies. So I have green on this to match the green here. Um, and this one, I have some of the blue. I think I just put one fairy in these particular ones. And the bigger ones, I put more than one, and you can add as many as you want. So I have a little fairy nestled here, and she matches the color of the flowers. And I have this one here. And something I like to do to be diverse and inclusive is have multiple skin tones in my fairies because I think in every world that exists and in our imagination, we should always have as much diversity as possible. So we don't find something that just looks a peachy color, try and change it up a bit and uh, make it look very inclusive. You can also find um, things that already exist that you could paint or mold your own um, little things that make any kind of little huts and have a lot of fun with it. I'll turn this one around so that you can see I have a lot of foliage painted on the back and I have some windows here as well. And one more thing, in my previous video where I was showing you 
uh, fairy teacup gardens made from polymer clay, uh, there wasn't a close-up that showed you really how to make the fairy. So I'm just going to show you a quick method on how to make a, a quick body from polymer clay. So of course you always have to condition your polymer clay, get it warm in your hands and knead it and make it workable. And I didn't talk about that as much before. If you don't condition it, it makes it a little more brittle after you break it. So you want to make sure that it's well kneaded and well conditioned. This has been a little bit. So I'm not going to make this one very tiny. Sometimes I, I make them actually this tiny, um, but you'll see it better if I don't make it quite so small. So I'm going to pull a piece off that I'm going to make the head with. You can just form it, um, form the head and not attach it later if you want to, but I'm going to pull my head off. You could just pinch with your fingers and thumb and already have a neck and make a head this way and then you have a neck involved. Then you have to figure out how to separate the arms. So if you take a needle tool like this or even a knife or something like this and you don't have to buy particularly um, polymer clay tools, you can get cake making or other clay tools as well, whatever works. But anything you want to just dig in and separate so that you can squeeze out arms, that works if you're doing that method. However, if you're adding the head, you can just get a basic body shape. So in this case, I like to squeeze down to a bit of a point for the legs and then from the top, I squeeze in this direction and in this direction, and these form my arms. Sometimes when you're doing this, when you're working on it, um, your hands get very hot, so you can kind of melt and change what you've already done. So you don't want to handle it any more than you need to. So I'm not putting the details in my arms yet, I'm just separating that into this kind of shape. Um, and what I'm going to do is take this needle tool and try and put it exactly in the middle. I'm going to make a mark and then I'm going to put the pointy end down and I'm going to cut it. Or if you use the blade, just, just be careful not to cut your finger, um, you can cut and make sure you've got your two, leg, your two legs. So I, I've made it quite high to give me some space to shape my legs um, because you can always squeeze it together. The hotter it gets, the easier it molds. So I'm going to squeeze in a waist. I'm going to push up the body just a little bit. And then I'm going to squeeze a little bit of neck room here. So when you make your arms, you can decide where you want them. If I'm making this one sitting, then I'm, I might add little boots on the end or I might just squeeze the feet up. I might take a hand and once I have whatever kind of um, clothing I'm going to put on my fairy, whether it be flower petals made from polymer clay or actual um, this type of flower petals some people like to use, um, different things. Um, once you do that, you can decide where you want to put the hands. You can decide how much detail you want. So you might just want to squeeze them into bits you might want to take a little tool and separate out a thumb and even just mark some fingers um, or you could roll out a little thumb. Keep in mind though, the more details you have, the easier it is for them to break off in the oven. So if you do that, you may want to have it resting on a leg or behind a head or however you want to attach that. And then of course when you attach the head, you want to make sure that you work some clay into the other part of the clay. So I'm actually going to squeeze it together a bit. I swear I have to hold it down for this part. And I'm going to roll up some of the clay and make sure it's joined really well. So you can take different kinds of tools and make sure you have it firmly attached because there's nothing worse than putting something in the oven and when you take it out you find your piece is no longer attached. So at the back, at the sides, and at the front 
you want to make sure that that's a good join. So you can make that into as delicate or chunky, a little fairy, as you want. Variety is the spice of life. So enjoy. I hope you get some pleasure out of making the fairy condos. And I'll see you again. Enjoy the festival. Bye.